Hey there, welcome to your chapter 8, lesson 1 notes on adding and subtracting polynomials. By the end of the day, you'll be able to classify, add, and subtract polynomials. Before we talk about polynomials, let's talk real quick about monomials. Okay, um, you've probably seen mono before and like monocle, it's like glasses with one eye, or monotonous, someone who talks in one tone. Uh, mono means one, and then nomial means number. So not hashtag, it means number. A monomial, oh, that's one. A monomial is a real number, a variable, or a product of a real number and more of our variables um, with whole number exponents. So examples of monomials are just like one term in a polynomial. So examples could be 18 or some number n or negative 16 times x to the fourth power, you know, whatever. Um, our exponents have to be whole numbers, but our numbers don't have to be. So you could do 3.5, you could have it a coefficient 3.5b, 3.5b cute, whatever. You can even do like a variable over a number like that. That's great too. Okay, so that's a monomial. Um, and then we say the degree of a monomial is going to be equal to the sum of the exponents of variables. So if you have multiple variables, you need to add them all up together. Um, so just, just look at exponents. Degree means exponents. So the degree, oh, you know what, we'll do some examples. Um, Let's just do this one here. This this guy right here, they've got hidden exponents here of one and one. So the degree here is two because one plus one is two. The degree here, just look for the biggest exponent. The only exponent is four. So the degree is four. And then here there um, is no variable. So that's exciting. You could even consider it to be, oh, that's times a to the zeroth power, right? Because the z a to the zeroth power is one. So that works, ha ha. But that's why this has a degree of zero. A degree of zero. <laughs> um, so if you have a constant like eight, we say the degree of a constant is zero. And we also say that zero has no degree so that's fun. Hey, look, we already did that example. Um, so now the key idea of the day is that if you want to simplify a polynomial, you can add or subtract monomials, the ter terms of a polynomial, um, by just combining like terms. And remember that like terms have the same degree, the same variables. So here we have two guys with the same degree, they're both x cubed. So you can consider this as distributing an x cubed out of each term. So that's the same thing as 2 plus 11 times x cubed. So that's exciting. Uh, 2 plus 11 is 13. So this gives us 13 x cubed. Here we have uh, another example of like terms. We've got a squared times b to the fourth power. Notice they're multiplied together, so these become one term. a squared to the fourth power and a squared, sorry, a squared times b to the fourth power, a squared times b to the fourth power. We're going to do that same thing. We're going to distribute that guy out. So it's got an a squared b to the fourth power. And what did we leave behind? Well, we left behind a 2 minus 7. 2 minus 7 is negative 5. So it's negative 5 a squared b to the fourth power. Yay! Okay, sweet. I've been throwing around this term, no pun intended, of a polynomial. Poly means many, like a polymer has many substances to it or a polygon has many sides. Um, anyway, so polynomial is um, a monomial or a sum of monomials. I mean, we just, it's, it's a sum of monomials, but it can also be a uh, just one. Okay, so 
to classify, which means to put a name on it to say what kind of polynomial it is, um, we need to consider both its degree and there's no special term, there's no special name for it, number of terms. <laughs> so the number of terms is going to be how many um, how many monomials does it have inside of it? Here's a whole chart with all of them. So like we said, you can classify it by the degree or by the number of terms. We've already talked about degree a little bit. Remember degree is going to be the highest exponent. So here there is no exponent. It's just zero. Here the exponent is like one. Cool. Highest exponent two, highest exponent three, highest exponent four. Be careful because not always, you don't always have the exponent, the biggest exponent out in front. We happen to have this this way. We call that standard form. It won't always be like that. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay. If a polynomial has degree zero, we call him constant. This is because if you were to graph y equals six, it would just be y equals six. It would look like that, like on your graph. Okay. Um, if you graphed y equals 5x plus 9. That would take the shape of a line, so we call this guy linear. With a degree of 2, um, if we were to graph y equals 4x squared, it would be, it would look like this. We call that a, a parabola. Um, the, this is a quadratic. Not because the graph is a square. Obviously, this graph is not a square. I'll go draw this line too. Um, but because it's a square, like a quad is like a four by four quadrilateral four things it's x squared it makes a square so it's quadratic that's why um if we were to graph well okay i'll get away from the graphs because graphs get complicated x cubed we call a cubic x to the fourth we call a quartic or um you can really for any of these guys you can call them fourth degree, third degree, second degree, first degree, like that's fine. Um, fifth is a quintic, and like if you know your Latin, you can keep going, or you can just say it's degree of five, so <laughs> that's fun. We can also classify them by the number of terms. Um, remember, number is counting how many terms they have. Each term is going to be a monomial. So if we only have one, that's a monomial. Redo, I'm gonna make that really obvious. That's a monomial. If we have two, that's a binomial, like a bicycle. If your bicycle suddenly has three wheels, that becomes a tricycle, so three numbers is a trinomial. There is no more fancy term after that. <laughs> so, we wouldn't say it's like a quadrinomial. I've literally never heard that before. But anyway, um, since this guy had one term, we are back to monomial. And this guy has three terms. So this is a trinomial. You can tell how many terms it has by counting them. Great, each term is gonna be separated by a plus or by a minus. So that's why we've got one, two, three, one, two. Um, I talked a little bit about standard form. To put a polynomial in standard form means that the exponents, so degrees, of course, is your exponents. Um, the exponents go from biggest to smallest. They go from left to right. Okay, so exponents go big to small. That's what it means to be in standard form. Just make it purple. Okay, degree, this kind of thing is the exponents. All right. So for example, here we just need to look at the exponents. We're going to start out, this guy has a degree of 2. This guy over here has a degree of 1. This guy right here has no, has a degree of 0. I'm sorry. Not no degree. So putting them in order gives us x squared plus 2x minus 3. And that's it. This is nice because you can easily identify what kind of polynomial this is. 
This is a quadratic, because it's got a degree of 2. This is a quadratic, and this is also a trinomial, because it has trinomial, because it has three terms. Ta-da! Now let's look at this guy. We need to put them in order of exponents. So we've got 4a cubed first, sweetums. Oh, and then we just have these normal guys after that. We'll get to there later. So we've got 4a cubed plus 3 minus 2. But 3 minus 2 is 1. So we can even simplify this even further. That's 4a cubed plus 1. Nice. And this guy, since he's got a degree of 3, he is a cubic, and he only has two terms. One, two. So he's a cubic binomial. Um, by the way, if you have a trouble remembering cubic, quadratic, stuff like that, um, you can literally just say, oh, it's degree 3. It's a binomial with degree 3. Or it's a third degree binomial. Those are all totally fine. Sweet. Okay, for our last idea of the day, um, before you add polynomials, you need to make sure they're in standard form um, so that their like terms will line up. So first, we just look for what they have in common. We're going to combine like terms by adding 4w plus 3w, and then we're going to add that to negative 5 and 8, but remember that the negative goes with it. So that's negative 5 plus 8. 4w plus 3w gives us a 7w, and negative 5 plus 8 gives us 3. I don't actually like to do it that way. Um, I prefer the vertical way because it helps me keep track of like terms better. Um, I see that you got your cortex right here, your degree 4, those line up. Um, here, there's nothing to line up, so I'll just put 0. Nice. Okay, cool. So, plus 0. Awesome. Sweet. And then we've got our a terms to line up, and then our constants are going to be cool too. Okay. They don't really have anything in common, so I'll just kind of leave them there. Yay, and now we throw back to fourth grade, and we just straight add them. Okay, 9 minus 20 is negative 11. Nice. <laughs> negative 3 plus 5 is 2, a positive 2, so that's 2a. Cool, next. Ooh, I like this one. 0 plus 5 is a positive 5. A cubed. And then finally, 2 plus 3 is 5. Uh, a, a to the fourth power. Look, we combined like terms. How nice is that? And that will be our final answer. So I like to add vertically because then when you're done, you just do three sides of your box and then you have your answer in a box. Oh, yay. I legit just discovered that this year. Okay, cool. Subtracting is the same thing, except subtraction is a lie. So you're going to take your minus sign and you're going to say, haha, just kidding. I'm going to make everything negative instead. So Distribute your negative to both terms of your polynomial. So you're going to take this negative and you're going to say, just kidding, you're a negative, you're a negative, and you are now positive. And that's how subtraction works. We're still going to combine like terms. We've got our um, 4w would now a minus 3w. We've got our negative 5 now a minus 8. Negative 5 minus 8. Negative, or sorry, 4 minus 3 is 1. I'm just going to put W because 1 W is W. And then negative 5 minus 8 is negative 13. But I don't want to just... Mm -hmm. Simplify, that's W minus 13. All set. Last guy, uh, my preferred way is vertical. But what's very important is... we. Um, you need to take your subtraction and distribute him to everybody. So it gives you a minus 3a, minus 5a cubed, minus 5a, ooh, plus 20. That's exciting. And we're still going to combine like terms. Okay, so we'll combine our a term. What did I use last time? 
Oh, I used red, didn't I? Oh, lame. Okay, anyway. Um, we'll combine our a to the fourth power, our eight cubes, which he remembers zero, a cubed, and our a terms and our normal numbers. Okay, sweet. Oh, shoot, I forgot one thing. Did I do that over here too? Yes, okay, good. When you distribute your negative, change this to a positive. Because we're now adding. I'm going to do that again. Dink, 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 dink. Dink. Come on. Dink. There it goes. Aha! Okay, sweet. So when you take your minus, you're not actually going to subtract. We're just going to say, hey, you know what? Addition, that's adding a negative. So we're making everybody, oh, hey, negative. And now this is just an addition problem. So we go all the way over here. 9 plus 20? 20, 29. Negative 3 plus negative 5? Negative 8. A. 0 minus 5? Negative 5. A cubed. And finally, 2 minus 3? Negative 1. A to the fourth power. But guess what? You don't need to write the 1, but you do have to put the negative. So that gives us a negative a to the 4th minus 5a cubed minus 8a plus 29. That's our final answer. Ta-da! Okay, sweet. So remember to combine like terms, whether you're subtracting or adding, because they're doing the same thing anyway. Uh-huh. This is going to be a handy-dandy tool. As you work with these, you'll just... You'll accumulate that vocab just practicing together, um, but that is a great key idea, shortcut, table, chart, study tool to remember. Uh, yeah, that's great. Well, anyway, have a fantastic time in your homework.